Welcome to the Cross Border Interviews. Today, we're honored to be sitting down and speaking with Town of Smoky Lake, Alberta, Mayor Amy Cherwinichan. The town of Smoky Lake is recognized as the pumpkin capital of Alberta and home of the annual Great White North Pumpkin Fair. This, combined with the Smoky Lake Stampede and other events throughout the year, makes the town a must-visit. Residents and visitors enjoy a state-of-the-art golf club, a spray park for the kids, a curling rink, and even the complex ice arena. With many restaurants, hotels, Alberta registries, hardware stores, and even a fully equipped hospital, the town offers most of the services of the city without the lineups and traffic. So stay tuned and we'll be right back after a quick message with cross-border interviews featuring Town of Smoky Lake Mayor, Amy Cherwinichan. From the smallest village to the largest city across every region of the province, Alberta Municipalities represents the communities where over 85% of Albertans live. AB Munis provides a united voice for 265 of Alberta's 330 municipalities, including summer villages, villages, towns, cities, and specialized municipalities. As Alberta's largest municipal group, AB Munis listens to municipal leaders and advocates for solutions to their common issues. Additionally, AB Munis supports local governments by providing services specially designed to meet their operational needs and they bring their members together regularly so they can share ideas and information so that their communities can thrive. Check out Alberta Municipalities at abmunis.ca and follow them on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, now called X. Mayor, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. I want to start by asking a simple question that I've started all my interviews off with, but it's an important one for myself. Where did your sense of duty to serve your community come from, Amy? Well, to be very honest, I never thought much about politics in uh, in my younger life. Uh, my parents were farmers, didn't really talk a lot about politics other than the basics. Um, but uh, living in Smoky Lake... I got to know some people, obviously, and there was one of the counselors that uh, had approached me, not this term, but the term prior and says, you know, maybe we should run as counselors together and, you know, make some change. We're similar in age. We kind of align some of our thoughts. And I was like, you know, I can't do it this year or sorry, this term. I have a young son at home and just the meetings would be too much. All right. So she let that go. And then the next year, she's like, all right, you're not getting away with it this time. She was, but I have a new plan. You're not running for counselor. You're running for mayor. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> so I thought, what do I have I got to lose? You know, this sounds like kind of a challenge, kind of like fun. And uh, so we campaigned together, actually. Um, and uh, we had a lot of fun doing it. And I, I, don't know, I really never thought I had any chance. I mean, there was four of us. The three others were quite seasoned in politics and knew what they were doing. Um, but uh, that probably what was what didn't help them because their votes kind of got, you know, shuffled <laughs> and mine, mine didn't. So um, to my surprise, I came out ahead. And then I'm like, oh, my gosh, now what do I do? I know nothing about this. <laughs> but uh, Mel goes, she goes, well, that's why you have a CAO. She'll tell you what to do. And I'm like, oh, my God. But um it's been a lot of fun. Um, I mean, of course, it's always tough at some points, but um, that it's just I learn something new all the time. And, and that is really what keeps me going. And and in the beginning, I was learning something new every hour, it felt like. But anyway, it's been a lot smoother. I'm understanding the process. Um, and so, yeah, now now I feel like now I'm moving ahead in the right direction. <laughs> Okay, so I have to ask a question because I, I remember my first election that I put my name on the ballot and going to that ballot box and seeing your name is the most surreal experience in your life because you you literally are like, what have I done? And that's what I thought to myself. For you, seeing your name on that ballot and with the words mayor candidates on, over top of it, how, how surreal was that for you? It was un unreal. I just, I couldn't believe I was doing this. And then seeing my, not only on the ballot, but my name around town as, you know, vote for Amy. And I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, it was, yeah, unreal. I, I couldn't, yeah, I couldn't believe I was doing it. And, um, and then win, like, that was the next one. I was like, oh my, now what do I do? <laughs> 
So it, it's yeah. a steep <laughs> learning curve, municipal politics, because you hit the ground running like literally a week after the results are announced, you're sworn in. And in Alberta, it's budget season that <laughs> that time. So you're not just you're not just getting sworn in, but you're getting sworn in and it's budget time. How yeah. how important is it for you? Being a sort of, and I hate to say green candidate, as in like first term candidate, councilor, mayor, but you are, how important is Very it for green. you to prepare yourself every time in those in those meetings? Because the councilors, the community is looking to you as mayor to help them guide them through challenges, opportunities that the community has. So how important is it for you to prepare yourself every time you walk into those council meetings? It's very important. Uh, the first, the first few months was a lot of time spent with the CAO, just you know, understanding what was being said on the agenda, what they were looking for, what could be put out on the table as you're discussing, just to kind of be ahead of it. So, I spent a lot of time on the phone because right? I also had to work um, other, you know, in other jobs as well. So, um, whoa, 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 whoa! Phone, you're telling me that mayors don't get paid full time hours for <laughs> the work that they do? <laughs> Breaking news here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. So, but it, it does relate in a lot of ways to what other work I was doing too. So it wasn't all foreign, but, or all things I couldn't be doing on the side, but um, yeah, it was, it was just a lot of time and learning. So reading the agenda, going with notes, um, asking questions and sometimes doing a little bit of research with um, the CAO just so that I had an understanding. They typically did because this isn't new to them. Um, and then, um, yeah, that's that's all I could do. And sometimes it was really rough, <laughs> especially when the old mayor would, or the past mayor would come in and ask all these big questions. But <laughs> we've uh, learned to work better together now. So. <laughs> <laughs> Municipal politics is the closest to the people. You you go into your grocery stores, you go into your restaurants in your community, even to your hospital or anywhere. You go outside your house. You are the mayor. So that means that the traditional run into the grocery store and grab a carton of milk is not happening anymore because people will probably stop you. Do you find people are engaged on the issues that are being addressed? addressed at city at the town hall or do you find that people have that old adage as long as my water's turned on when i go to have a shower and my garbage is picked up when i put it out i'm content and and my taxes are low when i get my tax bill i'm content in what's happening at city hall or do you find that people are actually engaged on the day-to-day -day issues that are going on in the town of smoky lake it, it varies in in what's what is going on um if there's new new thoughts that are brought up or uh, something new that might be put into the town or um, because we had a um, discussions about a tower being put up, Rogers Tower being put up in our town. And that brought up a lot of uh, controversy. So that would be discussed in the town or in the grocery store post office. Do not go to the post office between 10 and two during the day. <laughs> It's our joke. <laughs> and um, and then if you're, you know, something else is going to do, we're going to sell something possibly. And that would mean a new, uh, like if it's a, if it's something they're looking for or wanting, then it's okay. But if it's kind of disrupting something that they're already enjoying, uh, yes, definitely brought up. Um, I find for me, I, I know other counselors might say something different, but I find they, they're quite, um, people are quite considerate on how they approach it. And, and they're not, you know, boisterous or unless I've done something maybe that's really upsetting, but it, I can't say that's happened um, in public, but um, yeah, it's a, it's a different, you've always got to kind of have a um, an answer that is politically correct on, on some topics so that you can address it in, you know, a different um, environment, not, not in front of anybody that you might not realize is on the other side or, yeah, because you don't want to cause that in the grocery store or the post office. And but I, I, I'm assuming, and uh, I'm assuming after three years, you've come to the realization. And I, I ask this to all municipal leaders, so you're not you're no exception to this question. They and and I, I I've been to Smoky Lake once, 
I've never chatted with people, but I've been there because I'm one of those people that likes to look for like world's largest things. And we're going to talk about some tourists and we're going to talk about some pumpkins here in a few minutes. But I, I can, I would hazard a guess to say that you have come to the realization that you are not pleasing a hundred percent of your community with the decisions you make on the issues that are in front of council. So going back to those sort of, and I don't want to say contentious issues, but those issues that people actually are engaged on that tower selling something, how do you make the best decision that is going to impact your community in a positive way while understanding that I'm not going to please a hundred percent of the people? Yeah, that's sometimes that's really tough. Um, I think the, the key is, or the, the beauty of our council is we do have, we are in touch with different um, social groups, I want to say, like we all kind of have different areas that we're part of. Um, and so we can kind of get an idea of where people, what most of the people are feeling the best that we can um, in, in, the, um, in, in our town. And also I feel um, when you hear the loud, the people that are the loudest and, and make the most noise, are are very passionate and, and it's it's great and, and but it's just to remember that it might be those only four or five people that are passionate and if no one else is coming forward maybe maybe it's not the majority but again that's not always correct but that's something we try to keep in mind that um and again sometimes it's really the science of it so with the tower there were concerns about radiation and um, you know, and really making sure we're doing our due diligence in uh, researching that to, to make sure we're not doing something like that. So that if that's being covered, then, you know, it's maybe not a bad idea. Um, and ensuring the people that have to look at it per se are okay with looking at it. Um, and they're going to want that are going to, it's going to impact directly. So it's, it's, it's tough and there's no right answer. Uh, and then economics, of course, are always another factor in our, um, our decisions and not we don't we don't like them to be the only reason of course or the top reason but they do play a little bit of a factor in there How and, and communication it, okay, okay that, Sorry. and that's the part that i was going to talk about next is how, communication is key to for any municipal leader mayor councillor reeve you name it we find ourselves often in echo chambers talking to people that we agree with talking to people that are sort of in similar mindsets of ourselves but as mayor you're not elected to represent those just those people you're representing everyone even the people who disagree with you on the issues how important is it to communicate and talk to the people who potentially say amy mayor amy i, I just don't feel like you're representing me on this issue correctly i need to voice my concern is it important for you to communicate with everyone and not just the people who have similar minds as you right it's very important to me i find it very challenging um with with um time and and you know uh, being able to get to where those people are at the right time so that um, we're we're both there <laughs> but um I do rely a lot on um, my other counselors to bring some of that information forward uh, and, and expressing what others are, are feeling or hearing. Um, but we do have, you know, some town halls where we have people engage in, in, in um, issues that are happening or things that we want to see happen. But those, again, are tough because it's one night. It works for us. Does it work for everybody? No. Um, so, but I do encourage people to contact me. I'm, I'm a pretty open book with my cell phone. Um, people tell me I'm crazy, but I just feel it's probably the only way they might get to me. So, um, I really do encourage that. So when people do engage with you and I I'm finding this a lot across Canada when I speak to municipal leaders. So I want to know in Smoky Lake, do people understand the role that the municipality plays in their day-to-day -to -day -to -day life? Or are they asking you as their closest elected official questions about provincial jurisdiction, about federal jurisdiction? Because, again, hazarding a guess, they probably know you better than they know their MLA or their MP. So, and you probably have a better chance of getting a hold of the MLA, not saying in your area that's true, but I've heard this from other mayors and councillors that 
local elected leaders have a quicker time getting a response from a uh, MLA or an MP because they have their cell phones. So for you in Smoky Lake, do you find that people are coming to you with only municipal concerns or are they coming to you with healthcare concerns, education concerns, or even what's going on federally? Oh, absolutely. A lot <laughs> is municipal. Yeah. Because it's something that directly affects them, usually, you know, garbage or taxes or, but, but yeah, um, healthcare is a big one. Um, we do get questions about not, you know, why are, why is our emergency closing? Why is there not enough doctors? Why <clears throat> all of these questions? And, uh, and, and again, that's where communication is the, the key. I mean, we have to keep, it seems like we're repeating and repeating, but it's to different people. So, and then the messages get mixed and we have to re-clarify. There's just, yeah, there's so many, you know, there's the the college of physicians and, and I have to make their decisions in there and they do it for the good reasons. And it's a process for good reads, like for, it's important. <laughs> and then as well with AHS, they have to follow their process and then, and then we can do what we need to do for ours. And so it's getting them to understand that these, these are in place for our own protection, but it is a long process and it can be very frustrating when you're from the outside, not seeing what's happening in the inside. Um, simple sidewalk put we had to go out a brand new school in smoky lake we needed a sidewalk to to allow the students from a certain part of town to get down to it and we're like hey we'll just put this sidewalk right here and then we're like oh no aspen view owns this part of it oh we have to make sure we're so far away from the alberta transportation the highway that is goes through the town we had <laughs> so a simple sidewalk took us almost a year to get in where it needed to be so and then people are thinking, we just don't care. It's, we're pushing it off the agenda. <laughs> and again, communicating that what we're trying to do, um, but we have to go through all these hoops to get there. So it's uh, it can be frustrating, but I understand their frustration. <laughs> do you get frustrated at the process? At, yeah, at, absolutely. But once you start to hear delegations of, you know, they come in to explain what's happening, and who they have to go through or, you know, just the reasons why you, it, it brings down your stress level a little bit as to why it's happening, but it, sometimes that red tape's a bit much, but <laughs> we, we, we work the best we can at it. <laughs> Understandable. I want to turn to the town of Smoky Lake now for a few minutes and talk about some of the challenges and accomplishments in the community. But before I do this, as I always do on the show, I just want to preface this line of questioning with this. This is a conversation between the mayor and myself. This is not a motion of council. This is not a direction of council. This is not a policy of council. This is her opinion and her opinion alone. She is one vote on council. She needs a majority of votes to get anything passed. So this is her opinion. It may line up with some of the issues that are being talked about at council, but right now this is her opinion in this discussion. Mayor, in your opinion, as of recording this, what do you believe is the biggest challenge or challenges facing your community today as of recording? Right now it would be housing. <laughs> we have, um, we've had an influx of people come into Smoky Lake for multiple reasons, whether it's, you know, health professional or, um, um, Im immigrants from Ukraine. Um, and we've had uh, like the RCMP always have people coming in another professional, not a health professional, but so we've always, we've had an influx and we just don't have the housing to support it. Um, and the other issue too, is people don't want, not, not everybody wants an older place. You don't want to fix her up or they kind of want something they can just move in new, modern, um, kind of ready to go. And some want to buy and some want to just rent because they don't know if they're going to stay here forever or if they're just going to try it out for a year and move along. So that's been our, our biggest issue. And we've also had the Métis Crossing um, come up here in the last few years. So they've also have workers that need place, you know, people that come to work there want a place to live close by. Um, so that's been a major um a major issue in our in our um in our community so that's i would say the top of course infrastructure is another one but i think that's everybody's problem and then 
<laughs> it's just the way it is. <laughs> you must talk to Alberta municipalities a lot because that's what I hear from <laughs> them as well. Um, I want to talk about housing for a second because I I uh, I, I know that Smoky Lake was just a, a recipient of the Housing Accelerator Fund from the federal government, which will help sort of bolster some zoning and changes to some uh, uh, pathways to get more housing developed. But that is only one part of the solution. And housing is not just a municipal issue. It's a multi-pronged issue. It's a provincial, federal, uh, municipal, residents, and even developer so, uh, problem. Do you find that people are knocking on your door and your door as the proverbial municipal office door asking to build in your community right now or with the economic challenges that we see across Canada people are not building as quickly or even as much as they were potentially 20 years ago or 10 years ago. Yeah, a lot of hesitancy for sure. And being a small town where there is potential, like we can see it, it's kind of there, but will it be there for like, from talking more into the development um, developers uh, perspective, you know, it's a big commitment to put up two or three houses and, and really hope for the best that it, they sell. Um, so I, there is a hesitancy. We've done a few things to encourage developers um, with like what? loader. So we've de decreased our lot prices by quite a bit <laughs> <laughs> to uh, get them, you know, give them the incentive. Um, we're, we're willing to partner um, in, in like nothing specific, but if they come up and said, hey, you know, this might work um, if we work together on this or so we're, we're kind of open to suggestions from developers. Um, and the, uh, we've also with this AHF, uh, AHF, yeah, grant housing, if, um, I can never remember the whole acronym, housing accelerator but, uh, fund. Yes. Accelerator. What word? Anyway. Yes. <laughs> um, and, uh, I always want to say affordability, but that's not the word. And, um, uh, e-permitting, like the access to e-permitting online, that's going to give us that. So that that is really what will help as well with the process and making things a little quicker so that once they get it in their head, they can just go really quick and not decide to go somewhere else. Um, so that's also been something that's happening. Uh, we've also zoned areas where we can have smaller homes, smaller teeny homes as a... So like the tiny homes or something like that? Like the modular... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like between 600 and 900, I think, is the small homes. And then four to six, I think, is teeny. I'm not great at the exact size. But um, yeah, so we're kind of, in, you know, encouraging people to try different things. Uh, we don't, we're trying to be progressive. We don't want to be stuck in something specific because everybody has a different idea. Um, we are a dynamic um, like population. So I, I think we have to that's where we're going to get momentum if we can just let people do things and try new things and hopefully it works. And we've had some interest. We've had a, a couple of people come towards for us, uh, to us about tiny, uh, small homes, not, not tiny, but small homes. Um, we've had someone develop a new home just as of late to, to sell. Um, so it, we've seen some progress. We've sold all our lots in an area that is just, um, it's a smaller area, but they've all sold and um, people are putting their modular homes on there. Uh, so we've seen some progress. It seems to be working, um, but it's in the beginning stages. So I'm going to ask the chicken and the egg question here for a second, because you talk about infrastructure, infrastructure and housing go hand in hand as much as we don't often think about that, but they do. Um, is Smoky Lake prepared for a potential influx of housing builds because that means wastewater upgrades lagoon upgrades sewer upgrades road upgrades and let's be honest in 2024 the prices don't seem to be falling right now and they don't seem to be wanting to fall anytime soon so is smoky lake prepared for a potential growth spurt in the next few years if developers say tomorrow you know what let's start building and let's start building in smoky lake but do they have the infrastructure to do it? To support it. Yeah, that's um, uh, that's something that's going to have to come. Uh, like, I, I think we're, we, well, we are prepared for a small, and, you know, we're from what we've sold and what we've been doing, we, I, we're we okay. But yeah, if things continue to grow, there could, it could look a little different and there might be a lot more with that. So uh, we'll be asking the government for more money. No, I'm just kidding. That never happens. But yeah, we'll have to definitely be looking into that. 
Um, hey, a little I, I spoke to Minister McIver last week and uh, as of recording this last week, and he said he often knows that municipalities will often come to the asking the province for more money. So that's not a joke. It's just the reality of what it is, because he did it under the Klein years, he said. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, I think if they see actual growth and we can, you know, give them actual proof of it happening, it could help us a little bit. And this um, housing um, accelerator fund F is, um, does incur, it does give us some room to, to work with the infrastructure, like we can use it to build infrastructure and stuff. So oh, okay. that's I kind didn't of know exciting that. as well. It's not a lot of money, but it, it's like, it's a lot of money, but it's, it's, it'll be used quite quickly <laughs> if we start using it for infrastructure i, I, I want to yeah. flip a little bit of the original premise of the question about the uh, the housing challenges because we talked about federal provincial uh municipal developers needed to come to the table but we often forget to talk about and i often forget to ask the question about do residents want to see growth in smoky lake because mm -hmm. again hazarding a guess NIMBYism is alive and well across this country, and there's probably a few people in Smoky Lake who say, I moved to Smoky Lake because of the small town feel. I want to keep it that way. How do you balance growth of your community with the understanding that you're, again, not going to please everyone, but with the people who say, Smoky Lake is going to change if you continue to grow at a pace that you want it to grow to bring these new housing units in? That yeah, That's a very good question. Um, so I I know there's a there's a few that would rather see it stay the way it is, but there are a lot that also would like to see it grow. Not we don't. And when we say I guess grow, I I don't see a, like a city or anything crazy. You're, but you know, you're not seeing an apartment complex coming into Smoky Lake in the next ten years, like <laughs> twenty story apartment complex. Are you? Yeah. No, like <laughs> fourplex duplex <laughs> something small but um we want we want a little bit of growth because our it would it would help with the taxes it would help with keeping things newer because we because we would have the influx of taxes and uh like we want to see things and, and and more access to some of the simpler things um we have the grocery stores which are wonderful but you know just little perks that bring people in um we don't want the big grocery like the big walmarts or the costcos or anything like that we just want a, a town that is sustainable um that our residents are able to even like walk more walking trails so people can move around and and have a healthy lifestyle so not not an excessive growth, but just a small growth so that we can stay alive is is what is how I see it. And and I think explaining that again, communication to a resident that that's what we want to see. We don't and we don't I know because crime can, you know, be a something worrisome. Um, I think that's the biggest issue is crime. But I think if we attract the right population and and uh, keep people engaged as a community continue with the things we do um in groups uh i think i think we'll be just fine now i i, I don't want to sort of play in that sandbox a bit but i've got to ask the question because you brought it up and i guarantee you there's going to be someone who's listening to this saying what do you mean crime is smoking like not a safe community you're not saying that are you no no it's a very safe community and that's where uh, people get worried that if we change things a little too much, we grow too much, we might encourage more crime. I mean, yeah, we're not I crime free. <laughs> I just wanted to clarify that because I uh, we had that happen on a past episode, and I just want to make sure I clarify that for those who are listening. Um, no, that's a good idea. We don't want to put that out there. <laughs> no. So flipping the script a little bit. So we talked about the challenges. What are the accomplishments that you are proud of when it comes to Smoky Lake? And I'm going to put you in a box here for a little bit, if you don't mind, because we're going to talk about the community and some of the great aspects of your community in two seconds. But from a governance perspective, from a council perspective, from an administration, what is the thing that you as mayor are most proud of about your community? I I would say um, since being in council, the, the thing I'm most proud of is the relationships, the partnerships that we've created with um, the county, first of all, because that's always a challenge. Um, I feel our councils and where I've been able to kind of work together um, to, to create a few things and then like a, a few, pro, um, not programs, but um, like projects together. And then with that, we've also been able to, 
to county and town together, create a partnership with the Métis Crossing. So um, we had, we've developed an MCC, a, a municipally controlled corporation with the town and county to be able to get funds and then partner with the um, Métis Crossing uh, to create like a tourism um, idea. Like we're, we're still very much in the initial stage, stages because there's so many players that it takes a while to get things going. Um, but I would say that's like, been a really great accomplishment and um it's just so nice to be able to to say we work alongside with our neighbors um all around so that's one of my favorites um we have a few other smaller accomplishments such as like the ev chargers we brought into town because that was a bit of a controversy but um being progressive again and 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 taking trying new things isn't it we, of course we get a lot of government help with that but it definitely um shows that we're trying to move forward with the times. And, and and I mean, it might not be the best decision in 10 years, but we don't know that. So we're just, we don't want to stay stuck. <laughs> I, I, I like it. Um, let's talk about tourism because you're in the early stages and it's a subject that's near and dear to my heart because I think tourism matters. And I think tourism is something that we often forget about from a municipal standpoint when we talk about our communities. But as someone, as I've said on this show numerous times, and I'm making a big trip throughout this summer. Uh, going to be coming up to Smoky Lake. I'm coming back up. So I'm coming to see some great tourism destinations that you are about to recommend. So if <laughs> what are the hidden gems that I need to see this summer when I swing by, besides having a coffee with yourself, what are some of the tourist destinations that I need to see in Smoky Lake when I'm there? Well, I love the Métis Crossing, but... Connected to the Métis Crossing is the um, historic Victoria Trail. So it starts by Wasetna and it's along the um, along the river. And there and every so often there is a like um, a history uh, monument or plaque or something to read about. So you go along the whole. It was the highway that the explorers and the Métis had taken to get to the Métis Crossing. So it it's it's got the post office it's got the free traders house it's got orthodox church it's a house in the middle of the road and every everywhere you stop there's a little explanation of what happened in that area or it was the first um you know place they they settled for school and so there was along the whole highway or sorry i was called the highway but the whole road there are little gems and it's 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 phenomenal. It, it's kind of hidden, so people don't realize that there are signs, but you know how those signs are for some reason. But that is one of my very favorite. And then at the end is where the Métis Crossing is. It kind of finishes it off. So then you can see the, oh, they have a beautiful deck. You can have coffee there and enjoy the view. Um, there's some history in, in, in the inside there as well. There's a lot of activities on the website. It changes um, because of the, the time of year and stuff, but that, yeah, they offer a lot in that area. And I think it's wonderful. There's the domes if you want to go really out there and spend a lot of money, but <laughs> sky domes. <laughs> I don't know if I can get you a discount, but. <laughs> um, so Smoky Lake is synonymous with being the pumpkin capital of Alberta. And you have, a, according to your website, and I'm just, I, I need you to talk about this because I, I, where, where's the, what's the name of the festival? And I apologize. I the should know this right. Great White North Festival. Yes, the <laughs> Great White festival. North Pumpkin Fair, according to your website. Yes, that's right. What is it See, all I'm about? Humbled. Oh, it's the craziest day in the world. Um, if someone would have told me this, I said they were full of it. But there has been 14,000 people in our town in one day. So imagine the vehicles trying to get in and then trying to get out. It, you don't, as your a resident, population is about a thousand right now, right? Like, but, so it doubles exponentially during this fair period crazy we run out of food and they're like we try like we know what's happening and we bring in food trucks we bring in uh every like everybody depends on this like every fundraiser every group fundraises that day and comes out crazy i am the coordinator of the uh, curling club so we have pierogies and sausage and i there i couldn't keep up like we sold 
we sell everything. We make 10 grand. How do you make $10,000 in one day? And that's just me. That's not, that's not everybody. Wow. So it's, there's a, um, Oh, uh, Ferris wheel. What do you, the, the, um, fair area for kids and stuff, which Carnival, is a big yep. deal. Carnival. Thank you. Um, and then there is where they have the way off. So the way off is kind of what a lot of people come for. They want to see the 2,500 pound pumpkin being weighed, um, in Smoky Lake. Yes. That was last year. It was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't know um, that they weighed the pumpkins. And this is just fascinating because I, I, this, this is a tangent. And I apologize right now, Amy, but it's yeah, starting to it's, sound similar to like Stars Hollow off of Gilmore Girls for a second here where people <laughs> all get together and they weigh the pumpkin. So I apologize, yeah. but it's like, oh my God, this is like a quaint community. <laughs> It's a, it's a, it's a big deal to some, to some people. And it's, it's in New York is where we are actually like, um, <laughs> zoomed in or like we, we tell, like we weigh them live and New York is also a part of, they have theirs as well. So it's at the same time. And I could be wrong with the name New York, but I'm hundred percent sure it's new. Anyway, so we weigh it and then they, they log it in and, um, last year, oh, I should have got the facts, but it was the first or second in, in North America. So it was huge, 20, yeah. And he's from, uh, the winner was from Lloyd Minster. So it, uh, it's not that far. And he grows this big pumpkin. And it's like a, like you can only touch them. You can't touch them, but the, the ones who are growing them, they're inspected for, you know, any kind of holes or any. So one time he brought it all the way here and it got hit with a rock and it was disqualified. <laughs> Horrible, I know. And so, and then, oh, when the is, best part. Okay. So then there's, go ahead. I was going to say, when is the fair? Because now I want to come. I want to be part of this 14,000 people coming to your community. It's the first Saturday of October every year. It's always the same weekend. Yeah. And I, I think again, this weekend, this time it's the Thanksgiving. That one's challenging because, um, yeah, oh, it's I'm just not coming. as nice. I'm still coming. I don't <laughs> care. I'm coming. I want to see a giant pumpkin if I'm <laughs> And you'll never guess what is served in Smoky Lake on the pumpkin fair. Pumpkin pie. <laughs> I'm like thinking like, okay, it's not pumpkin. It's got to be something weird that I'm like, okay, is it like French fries or something? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'll be there. I think you're going to probably get $10,000 oh. just from me if you're selling pumpkin pie. <laughs> Uh, it's it's yeah it's an amazing amazing day oh and then the best part okay so we weigh the pumpkins and then there's always the not so they're only like 500 pounds they donate their pumpkins for the the drop the pumpkin drop at the end of about five o'clock usually and it's on a big crane and then they have a vehicle that the grads will paint um for fun or whoever but it's usually the grads that do it and it's dropped onto this vehicle and smashes everywhere, which is like my favorite part. So, and you got to stick around. It sucks because it's at the end and you're tired and you're, you know, you're done with all that food and <laughs> but it's worth it. Oh, oh, it is a date. It is a pumpkin date. I'm marking it in the, the calendars this year. We're going to, we're going to bring up the show. We're going to do live streaming from the show. <laughs> um, I, I want to. <laughs> Where do you go? What's your oasis in the community? Where do you go after a long day of council meetings, after a long day of working in your full-time job, even though mayor is full-time, but not full-time pay? Where do you go in the community to decompress, to let it all go and know that tomorrow morning you're going to have to get back up and try to make Smoky Lake better than you left it the day before? Well, it depends what time of year, but in the summer, we go to the lake. We have Hanmore Lake, not very far away, about 15 minutes, and it's a beautiful lake. There's a place for kids. There's a decent beach, with now with all the rules, you know how that is, But the, and the water is phenomenal. So uh, that's that's where we like to go, me and the kids, when uh, in the summertime. Um, and then also our, another favorite part, place in the summer is our, our golf course. It's a beautiful nine-hole course. It's it's rated top something, and I'm not going to quote anything, but it's beautiful. Like me, and the, me and my son just absolutely love it. So we do that. But in the winter, 
I decompress at the curling club. I love to curl and I love to visit with um, <laughs> fellow curlers uh, <laughs> on Mondays and Thursdays. So it, that is my favorite place. Um, and then otherwise, it's just hanging out with friends, you know, sometimes outside around a fire and sometimes just inside, you know, with some coffee. <laughs> so. Well, I'm glad that you don't just go home because I, I hear that a lot on this show that after a long, stressful day, they just want to sit at, at, at their host's house and do nothing. So it sounds like you're very engaged in your community, Amy, and I appreciate the honesty there. Um, my final question for you, though, and it's an important one. So we started by talking about yourself. We're ending by talking about the, the town of Smoky Lake. And I've got to know, from your perspective, what makes Smoky Lake such a unique place to live, to work, and to raise a family? Well, what the one of the beauties of Smoky is that it's only an hour from everywhere, which is good and bad. But typically, it's an hour. So if you wanted to you know, enjoy the small rural life, you know, friendly people, safe place, slower pace of life. Um, it's here. And you can either, you know, drive to work um, towards Redwater, or you could, you know, work in St. Paul, it's still an hour, but it's all doable. Same with the city, uh, but you can live here. Um, some people even live here, but work out in Fort McMurray. So they're, you know, they fly, they do their shift, they come back, they have the small life here. Um, <clears throat> Uh, and then, and and also, if you wanted to go to do the city lights, it's not that far away. You can go have a date night. You can go visit with your friends or with your friends and do that. So that's what I love about it. Um, and the other thing is that um, raising a family here is beautiful because, it, like I said, it's safe. My kids walk everywhere. Um, I never really worry too much about them. It can be even towards evening and I, I walk everywhere as well in the dark and I never feel um, unsafe. Um, and being a small town, my kids in, in school, I hear everything. They can't get away with anything and whether it's good or bad, because <laughs> you're usually related to them somehow, or they're your mom's best friend, or, you know, you just hear about it. So, and, and they get raised by a, a little bit of everybody. And I, I love that. I feel kids should be very, um, well-rounded, um, getting different perspectives. Um, and, and yeah, so I, I just, I wouldn't, I wouldn't raise my kids anywhere else or live anywhere else. Really. It's beautiful. So I, I know I said that was going to be the last question, but you brought up your kids and I wasn't going to, but you brought them up. So we got to ask the, the, the <laughs> yeah. question here. How did they take mom becoming mayor of their community? Were they, was there a little swagger in their step when they went to school the day after? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they realized what it meant whole, like well they realized what it meant but what kind of impact it would have because they're they were worried about me being at meetings and worried about me not being home as much so that was a big thing but when they got to school the next day and everybody was saying your mom's the mayor your mom's the mayor they thought that was pretty darn cool they're like came home all kind of <laughs> and and my son and my daughter will text me hey uh miss mayor there's an issue here on the road uh, do you think you could handle that <laughs> I love it. I love it when family comes together in those situations. But I guarantee you, they probably don't go to the post office with you after probably the first month. They went, nope, never again. Never again, mom. Anywhere sometimes they're like, mom, can we go home? I, I love them having them as an excuse sometimes. Okay, I got to get home. They're getting tired or hungry or whatever. <laughs> oh this is the best way to end a, fun, a good lighthearted interview amy mayor thank you so much for sitting down with me today this has been an honest to goodness full of fun uh it's always great to talk to people who are so passionate and who are so in, engaged and personable about municipal politics and the, the role that municipalities play so thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to do this it's always a pleasure well, thank you for having me. It was quite an honor to be emailed and asked to do this. So I am really happy I could. <laughs> Thanks so much for tuning in for another great episode of Municipal Affairs with Chris Brown. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button now. Stay in the loop with all our diverse content that we have coming to you before our summer hiatus in July and August. And we'll be back in September for great new episodes of the show, talking about municipal issues from coast to coast to coast here in the great country of Canada. If you can, consider backing the show. 
Every contribution, big or small, amplifies the depth and the breadth of our programming. Find the support page link on the Cross Border Interviews website today or in the show notes below. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, but as always, just keep talking.